Hello, hello, hello. Just got back from work. I, uh, I work at accounts up at a, a firm in London, and uh, my main hobby, I mean, really much the only thing I do outside of work is, uh, is uh, exercise and uh, 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 keeping fit, you know, I'm, a, I'm very much a keep fit fanatic and uh, so when I finish a, when I finish a day I, uh, I get back, I have a quick dinner, a vegetarian dinner, I don't eat meat because it's very bad for your health uh, and then I'm straight down the gym and uh, I often spend a great deal of time there pumping iron, you know, building up, making sure I've got good abs and, and so on and, uh, and then well, that's, uh, well, that's basically the, the only thing I do outside of work because, yeah! Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta feel that burn. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go through the wall. It's not a wall. There's a wall that you hit, and when you when you reach that wall, what can you do? You can try and climb over the wall, but you can't do it. It's too high. You can try and dig under the wall like a rabbit, but you can't do that because you're not a rabbit. You're a human being. So you gotta go through the wall. You gotta go through the wall. Yeah, that's what I do. I spend all my time doing that, going through the wall, through the wall, so that I can get stronger and bigger and have very, very, very big arms and be manly. Yeah, manly. Very, 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 very manly. Yeah! Yeah! Hello, hello, hello. Today I'd like to talk about the kind of people who are very, very, very interested in their appearance. And I'd like to look at the correlates uh, of those kinds of people. I was inspired to do this by reaction to my video um, on people who have tattoos. Now, some might say that having a a uh, hostile reaction to a video on people that have tattoos would make one, if anything, inclined to be more careful about doing videos uh, relating personality and what people look like in the future. But I've decided that, uh, no, if anything, it should spur me on, because physiognomy is correct, and physiognomy allows a great deal to be understood about people. Who are the kind of people who are concerned about gym use, who are concerned about what they look like, and who want to make sure that they look really, really, really good. Um, um, <clears throat> one of the things actually that made me think about this was uh, various comments that have been uh, placed about my colleague Michael Woodley of Minnie. <clears throat> Somebody wrote that, oh, he's over 30, how can he have arms that thin? How can he have arms that only have an eight inch circumference? So I got thinking about this and I got thinking what kind of men would be concerned about how thick their arms were? And um, the answer is basically men who are uh, mentally unstable and uh, narcissistic. Uh, this seems to be, well, certainly mentally unstable. This seems to be what's going on. So some very interesting research by Bowles found that the relationship between personality and exercise found that in general, those that engage in a moderate amount of exercise, the pe people who just do, just do a bit of exercise just to make sure that they're reasonably fit, those people are psychologically uh, relatively normal. Those people are low in mental instability and they are high in conscientiousness and they are high in agreeableness. In other words, they are high in what's called the general factor of personality. They're the kind of people that you want to be around. They're the kind of people that get on in life. Now this makes sense, of course, because <clears throat> You would expect that people that were low in conscientiousness uh, would be too lazy to, to do any kind of exercise regimen, would be just too bone idle and would put on weight and whatever. Those that were low um, in agreeableness wouldn't care about other people's perceptions of them, and so they wouldn't care if they looked quite appalling. Um, and those and those who were very, very mentally unstable would often find that they were too exhausted with life to be able to do anything. So that makes sense. But it's when people are very, very interested in going to the gym. It's when it's, when it's their main hobby is keeping fit, when their life is their job and keeping fit, <clears throat> when they are very concerned about their appearance, then this relationship seems to reverse. So another study by Lewis, Understanding Exercise Behaviour, he again found a, a similar kind of thing, uh, but Costa and Olivier found that it was reversed. They found that in those that are very, very interested in exercise, very, very frequently going to the gym, and who it's a big part of their life, and who it's their hobby, they are, those people are low in agreeableness, uh, I, and they are high in neuroticism. In other words, they are mentally unstable. Now, this of course makes sense, because being low in agreeableness they are narcissistic, and they are therefore deeply concerned about what others think of them and how others see them, and they want to be understood to be sort of perfect and this kind of thing. And so it makes sense, if, if they perceive a muscular frame as being perfect, then that is what they want to achieve. In other words, they are extremely vain people, and this is what motivates them to spend all of their time at the gym. They are basically high in narcissism. 
they're also high in mental instability, A, because this is a component of narcissism anyway, uh, but B, because it makes them anxious about what they look like, they are anxious about how others perceive them, they are anxious about not being uh, perfect, because that's what they regard themselves as being perfect. And so anything that makes them question that is deeply concerning. And so, of course, this acts as a motivator to get them down the gym all the time. They want to be the muscle man because this makes them feel better about themselves. Because ultimately, uh, although they kind of have high self-esteem and whatever, they're quite vain, there's a part of them that where they, they don't really feel um, good about themselves. And there are a number of other studies uh, that, have, that, have, that, 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 that have found this. Emony and Bomb was another study. Same thing. Um, people who are uh, very, very focused on physical exercise, who are down the gym all the time, whose main hobby is physical exercise, tend to be high in physical anxiety. They are anxious about their appearance. They are anxious about becoming overweight. They are anxious about becoming unhealthy. Uh, um, uh, sort of um, pathologically so, and this is what motivates them to spend all of their time exercising. And now this should make sense, really. So the kind of men that you see that have these incredible physiques, these bodybuilder physiques with the, that uh, the sort of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe physique, uh, those that that is not a normal physique to have. And men that have that physique will have to work on it and they will have to spend a great deal of their time att attempting to achieve and maintain that physique. It is not a normal thing uh, uh, to have, uh, unless you are a, 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 in days of yore, if you're a full-time soldier or something. But it's certainly in an ecology in which very few people do physical labour as part of their job. It is not a normal thing to have. And therefore there are certain personality <coughs> traits which are associated with achieving it. And it seems that these are uh, narcissism, uh, that, that, which makes sense. It's being obsessed with what you look like, uh, being obsessed with, with, uh, with, with having a perfect body, uh, and a mental instability, which means you have low self-esteem, high neuroticism, and so therefore you, you're desperate to overcome that by having this perfect body and, 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 and seeming physically perfect. So I can't stress enough, those that criticise uh, people like my colleague or even myself saying, oh, well, you haven't got very muscular arms, I would suspect that those people uh, would be high in mental instability uh, and, and would be, uh, high, would be uh, also high in narcissistic traits. Now that's the men that are, that are, that are fascinated by what they look like and, and regard what they look like as very, very important. What about women? Well, this is perhaps unsurprising. It's what you would expect, really. What kind of women have cosmetic surgery done? What kind of women are going to have a nose job or a lip job or, or whatever it might, or, or Botox um, or anything like that, a, a boob job, whatever? What kind of women will do that? Well, there was interesting research on this by a guy called Malik, and he found that 47% of those who present for plastic surgery of any kind are subclinically uh, uh, mentally ill. Uh, basically, they have narcissistic personality disorder. That's that's pretty much what's going on. And as for the rest, although they may not be uh, um, to the point of being diagnosably mentally ill, i.e. potentially a threat to themselves and you know, actually you know, unwell, um, it is very likely that they would have uh, elevated levels of narcissistic personality uh, such that they um, uh, you know, regarded themselves as, as, as perfect and, and deserving of a perfect body and, 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 uh, and, and, this sort, and this sort of thing. And therefore wanted to have plastic surgery in order to achieve it. Um, he, felt, he, he, he found that apart from narcissism, um, the other uh, mental illness that was strongly elevated in these, or, in these, or mental condition that was elevated in these females that, are, that present for plastic surgery was historionic disorder. Um, this is a disorder associated with uh, attention seeking and a desperate desire for approval. So basically, this is something that you would expect to be associated with neuroticism, with low self-esteem, uh, with mental instability, with having a, a weak sense of self and your own importance, which then manifests itself in this desire to look better so that other people uh, like you more. Basically, it's basically a deeply, deeply insecure person. So two extremes, really. One is a deeply, prof profoundly insecure person that's desperate to be liked, and the other is a narcissist who regards it as their, their sort of right 
to have a perfect body and on some level is there is an insecurity um, in narcissism as well uh, uh, of, 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 obviously because you've got to you've got to try and reach this perfection and anything which questions your perception of your own perfection is going to trigger you and make you terribly terribly angry so you have these two dimensions to the kind of women who present for plastic surgery now if we look at then another thing that was uh, explored in this uh, in, in a paper this was by um uh, a 1982 paper, uh, which I will put in the below the video, was makeup usage. Makeup usage among females, and it was found that um, women who use a lot of makeup um, tend to be high in social anxiety. And this makes sense. It would be congruous with with women who want a plastic surgery having histrionic disorder, because if you have if you have high in social anxiety, therefore you're very 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 paranoid about being regarded as ugly, being regarded as unattractive. You you know you 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 think people negative thoughts strongly. That's what neuroticism is about. So you think people think you're ugly, and therefore the only solution is to wear uh, lots and lots of makeup. And you're also deeply concerned about what others think of you, and you want them to see you as attractive desperately, and you desperately want their approval, and so of course. Uh, you wear lots and lots of makeup. Um, so wearing lots and lots of makeup, piling on the slap, seems to be associated, when you control, of course, for how good looking somebody is uh, and, and for age, um, then it tends to be associated with um, anxiety, with, uh, with uh, an, an anxious kind of personality, and particularly social anxiety. Um, it's quite interesting on that front that, of course, a lot of women uh, do wear makeup, and so... Um, it's, we're talking about here controlling for how good looking a person is, but it's perfectly conceivable. What is what is makeup about? What makeup tends to do is it tends to basically make a woman look less old uh, by exaggerate by making the eyes look bigger, which which is a sign of youth. Large eyes, making the lips look bigger, which is again a sign of youth. Um, it tends to elevate symmetry. Um, by, by by sort of making the, the, the sort of making it look like you have higher cheekbones, things like this. So it's attempting unconsciously to manipulate men into thinking that a woman is of kind of better genetic quality than they are. And there's a degree to which, of course, if people wear lots of makeup, then it's quite noticeable that that's what's being done. Now, on that basis, you would expect sometimes women that don't wear much makeup or don't wear any makeup to be attractive, because it could be considered a kind of honesty signal of genetic quality. In a world in which all women are wearing makeup, if you're not wearing makeup and you're still good looking, then and young looking, then of course you must be extraordinarily good looking and young looking because imagine what you'd look like if you had makeup on like everybody else. So it's like a peacock's tail. The peacock's tail um, is a handicap. It's a physical handicap which makes it more difficult for men, for, for peacocks to escape from predators and things like this. It's a physical handicap. And it's, a, it's therefore uh, an honesty signal of genetic quality. It's saying to pea hens, look what good genes I must have if I've got the energy left over to be able to grow this impressive, massive handicap of a tail. I must have fantastic genes, because if I had worse genes, I would be investing disproportionately more of my bioenergetic resources um, in, into fighting off uh, uh, pathogens and, and, and whatever. And so I end up with a smaller, more asymmetrical, less attractive, gaudy tail. And so the fact that I've got, and so therefore, of course, the pea hen is attracted to these big tails. Uh, the, the bigger, the better, the more colourful, the better, because it's a sign of the genetic quality of, it's an honesty signal of the genetic quality of the peacock. Well, it could be the same with females. She's deliberately uh, handicapping herself by not wearing makeup. And thus it's kind of saying to you, well, look how good my genetic quality is, that I'm not even bothering wearing makeup. So although I might not be prettier than this girl here, I haven't got any makeup on, so look how good I am, so, so go for me. So it could be seen um, in that sense. And also in the sense that wearing lots of makeup is associated with mental instability, it's saying I'm not mentally unstable, which from the perspective of a K strategist who is looking for a female to marry and to invest in and have children and make sure he's not cuckolded by and all this sort of thing, a man who's actually willing to invest his resources in the female, he, um, the, the psychology of the female is important. He wants a female who isn't mentally unstable, because being mentally unstable is, is associated with divorce, is associated with marital breakdown, it's associated with having affairs and things like this. And if you're going to invest in the female, you don't want a female like that. And so again, you can see how a woman without makeup would start to become attractive. And it's very interesting, in many religious groups, females don't wear much makeup. There's a group in Finland, in Olu, called the Lestadians. The women don't wear any makeup at all. 
and so it can be it can be seen in terms of not tricking the men, but also in terms of a kind of kind of purity competition, a way of competing and saying, look at my look at my genetic quality, I, you know, a, a handicap. And it's a very interesting um, idea. But anyway, in general, um, a high use of makeup is associated with uh, mental instability, uh, positive body image. According to research by um, uh, uh, two research, twenty eighteen, I'll put it below the video. Um, is associated with not wearing much makeup, positive body image, low neuroticism. So in general, um, lots and lots of makeup uh, when you control for how good looking people are is associated with uh, neuroticism. Uh, of course, if they're very very ugly, you'd expect them to wear more makeup, but that's a slightly different matter. Um, there was another piece of research by Zaborski et al, and they found that there is no that females who present for uh, plastic surgery, breast, it was breast augmentations in this instance, are above averagely neurotic, uh, and there is no difference in neuroticism after the surgery, so it doesn't make them less neurotic. They're just above uh, averagely uh, neurotic. Um, there was a, a study by Java et al, and they found that uh, the, the main, one of the main um, uh, predictors of being interested in having cosmetic surgery of any kind is simply low educational level, so women who aren't particularly intelligent um, and this would make sense because you, you would expect that low intelligence tends to be associated with low openness, which in, ten, in turn tends to be associated with sort of very sort of everyday things like um, and, 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 and instinctive things like wanting to look good and that sort of thing. So that kind of uh, makes sense. Um, there was yet another study which looked at um, having any kind of radical change in appearance. Um, women will often go through phases where they will decide to dress suddenly quite differently. They've been through a long period of dressing in a certain way, let's say 1950s clothes, and then they'll dress in a different way. Um, any um, f uh, change in appearance tends like this, and in how women present themselves, tends to be so if they wear lots of makeup, then suddenly they're not wearing any makeup, this kind of thing, tends to be associated with mental instability. Um, it tends to be associated with some sort of mental breakdown, according to this research by Pierce. Uh, it means that, uh, fe fe that females are under a great deal of stress and they deal with this by taking control of the situation uh, and, th and thus changing how they, how they present themselves. It's a way of taking control, a way of providing structure, a way of testing out a new self and thus evidencing the instability of the self. So again, it, it, um, this is another um, instance in which use of makeup or not use of makeup or whatever, uh, 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 caring about your appearance, seems to be associated with, uh, with mental instability. Um, in addition, there's a very interesting study called Markers of Misbehaviour. This was very interesting. And it looked at um, different um, sort of societally unusual ways of presenting yourself which would tend to be, uh, of course, it would imply that you're very, very interested in what you look like and in how others perceive what you look like. Uh, there were a number of things they used. They looked at tattoos and the extent of tattoos. They looked at uh, females, particularly females, dyeing their hair and in particular dyeing their hair bright, un unnatural colours like pink and red and blue and whatever. Um, they looked at the use of piercings and in particular piercings that other than... Uh, ears and nose. So th these were regarded as radical piercings, piercing your lip, piercing your tongue, that sort of thing. Um, they looked at wearing massive amounts of makeup to the extent that you're almost dressing up, such as is the case among goths and other such subcultures. Um, and, uh, um, and they looked at various other examples of you know, people that would be seen to have oh, punkers and whatever, uh, people that would be seen to have radical, unusual appearance. And what they found again and again is that what these kinds of appearance are associated with is high psychopathology, that uh, high openness uh, and low self-esteem. It's high psychopathology, that is to say psychopathic personality disorder. This, this is something that crosses over very strongly with narcissism. We're talking about uh, low agreeableness. Um, uh, and le which means that you kind of don't you kind of, you kind of don't want to conform and you want to kind of spit in the face of society by being different and weird and shocking, low conscientiousness conscientiousness is rule following. So you, again, you don't want to conform, you don't want to follow the rules, you want to do quite the opposite, and you want to, you want to not follow the rules. Basically, what we've called other videos an R strategy. You are you are a narcissist. You are you are a um, 
uh, you, you're a psychopath, you don't care about others, you don't care about the feelings of others, you don't care about structure and following a plan, and you just want to stand out and shock and just spread chaos wherever you go. So that's the first thing that predicts these kinds of these kinds of ways of dressing. The second, openness, it's a personality trait, it's just associated with being open to anything new, anything unusual, anything strange, anything novel. Uh, and the third, then, is simply low self-esteem. Well, this is basically a, a very, very important trait of neuroticism, which we've seen is the case with all of these kinds of people who are, who are very, very obsessed with their appearance. Um, they, they, they tend to be, they tend to evidence aspects to varying degrees of neuroticism. They, are, they have they low self-esteem. Um, they don't think much of themselves. They feel negative feelings strongly. Um, and they try to deal with this by being obsessed with what they look like because it thinks it makes them, it, 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 it generates a reaction from other people, a positive reaction, or at least it gives them a sense of power over other people or something like that. Um, and so this elevates their self-esteem and they kind of feel better. So that was that was that with that. Now, finally, um, I was, of course, um, <clears throat> a great deal of response with regard to what I did on tattoos. So I want to uh, look at this again. What I showed in my other video is that there is a relationship between having tattoos and having low agreeableness uh, and low conscientiousness, which makes sense in the sense that you're shocking people, that you're promote, that you're drawing attention to the nature of your body, which is associated with investing uh, in sex rather than investing in the mind. Um, that 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 you're you're kind of not conforming to societal norms by having these tattoos, which shows low rule following. Uh, and low agreeableness, that you're highly individualistic by having these, these tattoos specific to you, which is associated with low rule following um, and low agreeableness, and that it's also associated uh, with, with mental instability because it's um, a way of asserting a sense of self, uh, implying that you lack a clear sense of self, and so it makes sense that it's associated with mental instability. Now, I looked at this in an, um, another video, and one of the things that was fascinating about the response was the utter stupidity of the response. People saying things like, oh, I, I've got a tattoo and I'm a lovely person, you know, I, 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 adopt, I adopt two disabled children and I'm very nice, I've got tattoos, you know. Um, and these just idiotic responses, and also very, very unpleasant, nasty, abusive responses as well, you know, having a go at me personally and being very, very nasty. Now, this shouldn't be surprising, firstly because, of course, uh, having tattoos is associated with low agreeableness, as I said, so you'd expect the people that have them to be above averagely aggressive and nasty, and to, not that they all are, but above averagely, and so therefore you'd expect uh, more so than you would if you um, perhaps um, were seen to criticise some other group to get aggressive responses. But secondly, what was fascinating was the inability to understand what an average is. People would say things like, oh, I, 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 I tattooed people have got low... They're not very nice people. I'm nice. But th that was a failure to understand the nature of an average. It was a failure to understand the nature of a small effect size. It was a fallacious appeal to anecdote. Um, it implies that the person that would say such a thing would either be of a very impulsive kind of personality, such that this would overwhelm their intelligence, which is one would predict would be the case, but also that they wouldn't be particularly intelligent, that there wouldn't be that much going on upstairs. And so it got me thinking, is there a relationship between having tattoos and intelligence? Now, a lot of the studies that I've found on this before, until now have all got quite small sample sizes, and so there isn't a relationship, but that's a function of the fact that the, that the correlation is too small and the sample size is too small for a significant relationship to be generated. Unfortunately, I found some research by my colleague Emil Kierkegaard, who mined the OkCupid okay dating website, wherein people filled out a kind of IQ test, um, and, and this could be correlated with various other things, that, various other uh, questions that they were asked, and one of these was about tattoos and the extent of tattoos and liking tattoos and what you thought of tattoos and whatever, and this could be correlated with how many questions you got right. Now, he mined this website, and so he had an N of something like 70,000. So a huge N, a huge, uh, and he did find a weak but significant relationship between, negative relationship between intelligence and having tattoos. So people who have tattoos are, on average, less intelligent than people who don't have uh, tattoos. And the difference was much bigger with women than men. So it's women that have tattoos, they are much lower IQ than the women that don't. 
whereas men that have tattoos are a moderately lower IQ than the men that don't. And I suppose this would seem to make sense in so much as there are various male social histories that involve getting tattoos such as being in the army or being in the navy or, or, or being in various subcultures um, whereas with women you don't get that so much and so therefore you would expect women to to who would get tattoos to be as it were our strategists and the, the, our strategy involves a syndrome of traits in, that, that, that go together where you invest more of your energy in a, a fast life history live fast and die young than a slow life history, which is where you invest in nurture. Uh, there are these two extremes to how people live their lives. And having a fast life history, uh, where you live fast and die young, there's there's no there's little selection. You've got to basically just have sex with as many people as, possible, as quickly as possible and be wiped out. And so there's very little selection pressure in such psychologies for um, uh, for conscientiousness or getting on with people because there could be no payback on your on your on your quid pro quo because the person's been wiped out. Very little investment in agreeableness because you, there's no need to get on with people really because the ecology is quite easy but it's unstable and very little reason to select for intelligence. And so it follows that uh, these things tend to go together. Our strategists, people that are uh, low in conscientiousness and low in agreeable, tend to be low in intelligence. They invest their energy in sex. People, as you move away from that, you become more intelligent, you become more cooperative, and you invest more of your energy in nurture. And this is the theory. So, so um, it makes sense. So they do seem to have low intelligence. But my general conclusion um, is that... Uh, it's quite clear that a moderate amount of exercise and whatever is 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 a matter of uh, a matter of people who are high in agreeableness, high in conscientiousness, high in extroversion as well, because exercise what makes you feel good, and ex and um, extroversion involves uh, feeling positive, feeling strongly. But when it gets to those who are very interested in it, who are very interested in how they look, and and and, and who and, and and who think it's very important that you know, men have to have big muscles and that. Uh, women have to have certain sec uh, certain secondary sexual characteristics, or you know, large, preferably secondary sexual characteristics. So they you know, they're, they're they're interested in how they look. That that for them that's important. It's, it's important that they've got to make sure they look good. Those people, it seems, are combine um, mental instability um, and psychopathic personality. So um, the next time that you're a narcissism. Uh, so the next time that you're dealing with somebody who says, oh, God, your arms are a bit thin, realise you're probably dealing with somebody who is high in psychopathic personality and high in mental instability. And accordingly, you're dealing with somebody who you should probably avoid. OK, well, I hope that has been of interest. And uh, if you've enjoyed it, then please do subscribe. It's very important. It really helps you subscribe and spread the word. Please do spread the word. It really helps you do that. You might want to um, give me a few guineas on Subscribestar or PayPal or Patreon so I can uh, build up some build up some more muscle. Uh, or indeed, more preferably, just do more research. And of course, you can go to my books on Amazon. And if this was an idea that was somebody, uh, one of my watchers, kind of inspired me to do, so I'd like to thank her. Um, and and if you have any ideas, do get in touch. I've been fascinated by some of the ideas that you've had and presented to me, and I may all do a video on them. And as I say, I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, goodbye. <laughs>